All right, I have just a couple more um, thoughts to share about hypothesis testing using randomization before we move on. So first of all, I touched a little bit on how flexible randomization-based hypothesis testing is. Now I want to show you just a few of the test statistics that you could use while you're doing randomization-based hypothesis testing. So we talked about a difference in means and a difference in proportions for two groups. We could also easily do a difference in medians. We could do one sample variance divided by another sample variance. We could do a single mean, a single proportion, a single median, a single variance. Um, we could use regression and use any regression coefficient. We could use a trimmed mean for one group minus a trimmed mean for another group. The list goes on and on. Pretty much any situation where you're doing a data analysis, you could come up with some way to do it using randomization rather than the classical methods. And sometimes you will not have a classical method to use, and so the randomization-based hypothesis testing will actually be the safer way to go. Okay, so when we were doing two groups, then we pretty much broke the relationship between the group and the actual data to randomly reassign it, and that's how we calculated our test statistics under the null hypothesis. But if we just have a single group, like if we're just doing a single mean, how are we supposed to do randomization-based hypothesis testing for that. So if we remember back for the bootstrap, we randomly resampled the data with replacement to create what's called a bootstrap distribution. So remember, if we're doing like a bootstrap distribution for a mean, then um, the bootstrap distribution's shape and skew is going to be approximating the actual mean's shape and skew the actual distribution for the sample means shape and skew. So in other words, the bootstrap distribution's shape is approximately the shape of the sampling distribution for the mean. Similarly, the variability for the bootstrap distribution is approximately the variability for the sampling distribution for the mean variability. Okay, so one variability is approximating the other, one shape is approximating the other, the skew is approximating the others, um, but then when we come to the center of the bootstrap distribution, we need to remember where is that bootstrap distribution centered? Well, it's going to be centered pretty close to the original data set's sample mean. It won't be perfectly centered at the sample mean, but it'll be pretty close. So if we're trying to test, for example, whether a mean is equal to 10 or whether a mean is not equal to 10, then we would like our randomization-based hypothesis testing um, sampling distribution to be centered at 10. Because here's the, so if this is the um, approximate sampling distribution for the sample mean under the null hypothesis, the null hypothesis says that the mean is equal to 10, so we want it to be centered at 10. But in reality, when we do a bootstrap distribution, it's not going to be centered at 10. It's going to be centered over pretty close to x bar. So say that if we calculated the, um, the mean of all of these um, bootstrap resamples, we get a mean of like 17.6. Okay, so here's our bootstrap distribution. It's centered at 17.6, and we're trying to use that bootstrap distribution to test whether the mean is equal to 10. Well, we know that the variability is right, and we know that the shape is right. The only thing that's wrong is where it's centered. So if we just scoot this distribution down so it's centered at 10, then we can go ahead and use that distribution to do our hypothesis test. So all we would have to do is take each one of these test stats and subtract off 7.6 to scoot this whole distribution down to 10. So that's just like one example of a way that we could use hypothesis testing in a kind of creative way. So for a bunch of these, well for some of these there's like pretty straightforward established ways to do hypothesis testing, but for a lot of randomization based hypothesis testing, um, it'll be specific to your particular problem, and so you'll have to do a little thinking to figure out, like, okay, how can I actually create this approximate sampling distribution under the null hypothesis? 
you'll have to figure out some way to do that using the tools that you already have. So this is just one example. We could take our bootstrap distribution, scoot it down to be centered at the mean under the null hypothesis, and then go from there. 